Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are going out big bait fishing. It's early. We've got cloud cover today, but the fish we're targeting are in really shallow water. So we wanna get a shot at them while they're up shallow feeding in the morning. It should be fun. We're going to throw a variety of glide baits and try and stick a big one. Come along. All right, we just arrived at our first spot. It is just daylight. So basically what the deal is, these fish move up shallow because at first light, the bait fish do the same thing. So they get up and chase the bait fish around before they back back out. So we wanted to be here early. We've got a handful of six to eight inch glide baits. We're gonna see if we can get them to eat them. thing in the morning hopefully we've got enough light that was awesome and smashed it just a donk just a hard hard bite on that storm arashi glide oh man what a way to start awesome that sneaky feet that fish bit three casts in a row it's being really cautious but he fell for it getting a bunch of bites now but they're short strikes they're not even crushing it that first one this morning it tried to take the rod from me these just load up that's all they do you're just reeling along and all of a sudden you're heavy and you stick them and there they are and they come off really really subtle we've got this cloud cover moving through that's the only thing that's different from the previous days but something's got them a little funky but we're getting the bites barely 
got him on the back hook. on that bait sanity, the smaller one. We're getting bit this morning. This is awesome. You are. Well, you're getting bit. <laughs> yeah, I've had two bites. Too cool. So what we're doing, guys, I'll, I'll kind of explain some of this to you while Tim keeps chucking here. You know that we love the S waiver. There's different kinds of glide baits, different categories, if you will. We've got what we like to call open water glide baits and cover glide baits. And we talked about this in the past. The biggest difference is that open water glide baits are typically the larger baits, especially those that are ultra fluid, huge wide swimming action. You know, the Bait Sanity Explorer, depths 250 a hinkle trout a bunch of that stuff big open water baits then you have this other category of baits that are often overlooked and they're always the least expensive which is awesome and we call those cover glides the bait sanity antidote is one that we're throwing today the s waiver we've used for years and years today we wanted to throw some different stuff so we've got waivers with us in case we needed them but the fish are eating these other baits it's awesome so the antidote the Sneaky Pete, and I need the one off your rod. And the Storm Arashi Glide. We've been bit on all three this morning already. Uh, what we've done is we've upgraded hardware on all of them. So typically we go to owner hyperwire split rings. Now we're using the ultra split rings. They're even stronger. So we upgraded to ultra rings, 3X owner trebles, the ST56 because as you can see, we're manhandling these fish. If you hook a fish on a glide bait, they can come up and thrash and they're gone. So we really grind on them once we hook them. So we need heavy, heavy hardware to hang in there with the equipment and the fish uh, and then just get them in the boat as quick as we can. So again, these cover glides, it's all about shorter, sharper movements. They don't have this big wide glide, they have tighter glides and they're super reactive. You see us working those rod tips, twitching. That's when those baits cut and dart. That's when the fish lash out and eat them. So a few different options besides our norm and they are eating them. Too much fun. Let's keep going. Fish ate with like two feet of line out. Twitch it, twitch it. Come on, come on. That was awesome. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know what is going on this morning. I've had three bites now. That fish followed the bait all the way up to the boat and just, just barely kiss it. And I saw it. I happened to put the sunglasses on and, and saw it. Dropped it back down there and it ate it again, but it's very, very subtle. You know, I've had two other bites and they were completely different. The first one freight trained it and didn't stick. And the next one I think was a big fish. It was almost like a weightless worm bite. No bite at all, just twitched into heavy. You know, 
I swung into it, loaded up, big old boil came off. You know, if I didn't know any better, didn't see the boil, I would think I was hung up on the bottom or a tule or something, but um, they're eating very different. Um, hopefully they're getting more active and I can actually stick one and put it in the boat. <laughs> it is interesting though. I, I feel like if a guy was out here this morning expecting, you know, that freight train swim bait bite, he had one of those. You'd only know that you got one bite and we've had 10 bites. They're so subtle. When you're throwing a swim bait on your own lake, whether it's a glide bait, a big soft bait, doesn't matter. Every once in a while, you'll have one that'll just freight train it. But if that's what you're waiting for, you're going to miss a lot of bites. It's really rare that they're this subtle where all of a sudden it's just heavy and, oh, that was a fish. That's really rare too. But normally, all you're fishing for is a tick, like a worm or a jig bite, just that's it. You swing on those and you will get those fish. I think a lot of people that struggle with a swim bait are getting the bites and don't even know it because they have this picture in their head of, of what it should be. And that's not really what it is. Once in a while, one of them will come at it head on. It's a, they eat that thing, but not normally. So keep that in mind. Curse is over. <laughs> Quick release. Again, <laughs> another super subtle bite. Finally got one to stick. All right, guys, that sun's starting to get up. Just like that, the bait fish start pulling out, the fish go with them. Some more details on what we were actually doing here. Why here? Because we want you guys to be able to replicate this at home. What we're sitting on is a very, very subtle. It's a secondary point leading into a spawning flat. It's clockwork. This particular point is really small but it doesn't even matter that we're on this point. We could have stopped on 20 places on this lake and done this. These fish get up on those secondary points to feed before the spawn. The water's still in the 50s, high 50s. Fish get up, get aggressive. They eat what's there and then they back back out for the day because the water's not actually warm enough for them to get up and stay up really, really shallow. We're only fishing in a foot to five feet of water and these repetitive casts you see, that's not really how we teach swim bait fishing. It's different lake to lake. So if you have trout or kokanee in the water, it's pretty much a one and done thing in crystal clear water. You throw it out, fish it over the likely place, and that giant fish either comes up and eats it or it doesn't. This is entirely different. We're in a natural lake, ultra shallow water, schooling fish in the pre-spawn. So there's 20, 30, 40, 50 fish up here all in a big group feeding and the water's murky. It's maybe 16 inches of visibility, maybe, might be less than that. So as you're making these casts and moving them four or five or 10 feet, those fish aren't seeing the bait over and over again. It's gotta get close to them. You think of that big bait as spooking fish, but that's not the case. When that thing's splashing, they can't even find it in this murky water unless it comes close. So, a lot of casts on a large school of fish, that's why we keep getting bit. But now they're starting to shift back out as that sun comes up and that's pretty much a wrap. So we're gonna call it an early day. We hope you guys enjoyed this. 
we certainly did. It was a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully it was educational, gives you some confidence on your own body of water to try those bigger baits. We'll link all the gear from the rods. We were fishing some of the budget stuff today. This is a Dobbins Fury. Uh, well, I was fishing budget. What are you using? He's using a Mega Bass Destroyer. A Destroyer and a Fury. Uh, but seriously, we'll link all the gear for you so you know exactly what we were using all the way down to hardware upgrades. So when you get the right bite, you get those fish in the boat. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.